So, what is time? That's a dumb question. Well, I'm a it's Minkowski. fourth dimensional perspective. Like I, I, if no one asks me, I know. If they ask and I try to explain, I do not know. Our lives are essentially temporal. We are preoccupied with time every day, without forming a clear idea of what it is supposed to be. Sometimes we use spatial metaphors. We speak of time, flowing, passing, flying. But time is not space. We say that time is one event happening after another, that event happening and after all presuppose some idea of time. So what actually is time? Is it even real? Since the beginning of philosophy, there has been a persistent suspicion that time is nothing, an illusion. Today, we'll be discussing the theories of time, the A series, the B series, the Taggart's paradox, and the fourth dimension. In Western philosophy, there are two main ways to perceive time. Scottish philosopher J.M.E. McTaggart breaks down the ways we position things in time into the A-series and the B-series. The A-series takes a tense temporal position, events in time are understood as constantly changing their temporal order, to past, from present, from future. For instance, the Battle of Trafalgar was once a future event, became present in 1805, and now is the past and always will be. Events change their position in the A series. The B series concerns relations of earlier, later, and simultaneous, which we mark with dates. Events are understood to be fixed in time but are relational to each other. The Battle of Trafalgar is later than Hastings and earlier than the Somme. This is always true. Events don't change position in the B series. However, McTaggart thinks that both ways of viewing time are false. He claims that the A series is false because nothing that exists can be temporal. His argument is known as the McTaggart's paradox. McTaggart believes that for an event to change position in tense time from future to present to past, that event cannot exist in all three tenses. But every event must also have every position in the A-series. The Battle of Trafalgar must be future, present, and past. But future, present, and past are contradictory predicates. Nothing can have all three. Of course, the event doesn't have them at the same time. The battle was future, was present, and is past. So how is this a problem? How can a moment simultaneously exist in the past, present, and future when the only thing that is happening at this moment is the present? According to McTaggart and his defenders, this is possible because an event that already happened is, is the past, was the present, and was the future. In this way, past events contain all tense properties. The same goes for an event which is happening now. It is, was the future, is the present, and will be the past. And an event which has not yet happened is, is the future, will be the present, and will be the past. Meaning, all events, past, present, and future, possess all three tenses, making them, jointly, incompatible, and therefore creating a paradox. With this argument, McTaggart concludes that the A-series is false and that time is imposed by the mind upon a world which is not intrinsically temporal. But this is a false dilemma because tenses are an issue only in the West, as the majority of languages in the East are tenseless. The Thai language, for instance, refers to events using only B relations as its modus operandi. The Japanese language works similarly, wherein a future event can be indicated only in the present tense by assigning the event specific date and time. By this logic, tenses then is an issue of language, not of time. This notion is substantiated by Donald C. Williams, who states that the argument which denies the reality only of the future is in any case invalid because it mistakes for an ontological absolute the semantical accident 
that the significance of Indo-European verbs is generally complicated by tenses. So, basically, McTaggart's paradox is only a Western paradox created by philosophers who did not think to check with the rest of the world whether tenses are an intrinsically universal problem or are merely exclusive to Indo-European languages. However, this doesn't mean that the A-series is off the hook. There are other problems with the A-series. One known objection to the passage of time is the question, if time passes, at what rate does it pass? Second per second is the default answer, but it is not an entirely helpful one. According to Simon Prosser, the rate of one second per second should be understood as a ratio between durations along the series of physical events and durations along the A property series, a ratio that could have been different. In other words, the rate of second per second, minute per minute, or whatever it is that a clock measures, does not actually measure time. It measures durations of and between events. One more objection to the passage of time concerns the experience of time passing. Prosser believes that whatever it is that people experience as time passing is not actually the passage of time. To experience time passing, it should be the case that this experience can be intuitively distinguished from other experiences. Or as Prosser elaborates, if there is an experience of time passing, then something must make it the case that this is an experience of time passing and not of something else. And something must make it the case that no other element of experience is an experience of time passing. So if the A series is false and time does not in fact pass, then does that mean B series is true? According to McTaggart, the case might be that the distinction of positions in time into past, present, and future is only a constant illusion of our minds, and that the real nature of time contains only the distinctions of the B series, the distinctions of earlier and later. Well, the B series is also seen as problematic because McTaggart believes that change is integral to time, but the B series does not account for change. Events in the B-series are fixed in time and without the transitive nature attributed to the A-series, philosophers struggle to explain how we transition from one event to another. How do things change if they are fixed? The B-series then is dissatisfactory to the A-theorist like the pedantic author prior for its lack of undulation and seems to especially displease present tests for implying that time might somehow be inclusive. In the celebrated paper, The Myth of Passage, Bullins suggests that anyone who radically argues for the unreality of time do so out of the general romantic polemic against logic and the competence of concepts. Basically, he's saying that the atheists have lost sight of the objective. They are no longer solving the time problem, but are engaging in strong debates, denouncing each other's ideas for kicks, essentially. So, according to Williams, McTaggart was driven to deny the reality of time because he believed that while time must combine dimensional spread with the fact of passage, the B series with the A series, every attempt to reconcile the two ended in absurdity. So, how do we solve the time problem? Does time pass? Does it not pass? Is it real? My take is that the A series is false and the B series is true insofar as time is understood in terms of four-dimensionalism. If we thus accept realistically the four-dimensional fabric of juxtaposed actualities, we can dispense with all dim non-factual categories which have so bedeviled our race. Such seems the potentiality of accepting time as a fourth dimension according to Williams and other upholders of the doctrine. By conceiving time similarly to space, the answer to whether or not time passes is simple. It does not. The perception of the passage of time is an illusion. The conception of time as a fourth dimension was introduced by Minkowski's block universe interpretation of Einstein's theory of special relativity. This is of course bad news for atheists and presentists alike 
because to continue advocating for the passage of time, they are left with no choice but to deny Einstein's theory of special relativity. And everyone knows that to deny Einstein's theory of anything is just plain absurd. So, if time does not pass and should be understood in terms of four-dimensionalism, what is four-dimensionalism? There is no time. Time is an illusion. It's how we perceive the fourth dimension. Simmons. He's talking about space-time. How do you... How can I explain this? Right, we're 3D, yeah? Okay, but imagine, imagine we lived in a two-dimensional existence. Flat, just like a piece of paper. We wouldn't be able to conceive of three dimensions, of, of, of a, a cube or anything that's not two-dimensional, okay? Yeah. Right, so we flat paper people would perceive this three-dimensional cube as many separate two-dimensional moments, as time passing, the point on the line, traveling through space and time. But in fact, the cube, the line, is fixed. Yeah, it's just sitting there. There's no future, there's no past. It just, it just is. You're hurting my brain. I don't know if it's is right or if I even understand what he's saying. Really. Four-dimensionalism builds upon the B-series by viewing time as a dimension in the same way the space has dimensions. Unlike the A-series, which dignifies only the present, four-dimensionalism views all points in time as timelessly real, as are all points on any dimension of space. Whatever account is to be given of change, it does not consist in items gaining or losing reality. Four-dimensionalism offers the least disputable explanation for time, suggesting that time need not have temporal direction or flow. This means that the passage of time is but an anthropocentric conception to dignify the present and time does not, in fact, pass.